Hello, this is J.W. Greenbaum bringing you Gaining an Edge, the show where we discuss, review, examine, look back upon, and generally enjoy knives. So underneath the camera today, we have a very cool little knife, and that is the Finch Knives Hatfield. So this is a gunstock pattern knife, and it is a nice and fairly small one. Um, it's obviously locking, and rest assured, I'm not done with locking gunstock knives. Uh, absolutely going to do the re review of the Jack Wolf Knives Gunslinger Jack pretty soon, but uh, I'll get to that when I get to it. So, as you can see here, we have a liner lock. It's actually Finch's most expensive liner lock, interestingly enough. Uh, blade steel is 154 cm. It's well heat treated, made by QSP, nice and thin behind the edge, everything that you would expect from Finch and QSP. Uh, you can get multiple handle scale options. They don't just have this uh, Silver Sonic carbon fiber, they call it. Uh, they also have micarta and, I believe, wood. Uh, I think it's makote, makote wood. I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I do know the kind of wood. So, there you go. Now let's uh, get on with measuring it. So... Here's our tape measure, and here's our knife. So the blade is going to come in at 2.75 inches, nice and legal. And we are going to come in overall at roughly six, okay, so just over six and a quarter inches. Now, let's weigh the knife with this nice little scale here. And I think this weighs uh, three-ish ounces. No, less. I'm going to say 2.75 ounces. Whoa, 2.765. Okay. Well, there we are. That was a pretty lucky guess, but whatever. Okay, let's shut it off. Now for our size comparisons, we have... And on Terry Honive's Rat Model 1, which, as we can see, really dwarfs it. Um, let's uh, bring in something a little bit closer in size in the Ontario Knives Rat Model 2, which has a little bit more usable blade. Also, that little overhang right there. Otherwise, okay, it's a very similarly sized knife. And... Our Token Spider Co. Paramilitary 2. This one is a Cutlery Shop exclusive. Warncliffe and CTSXHP. And uh, next up is our Token a Large EDC Knife. Cold Steel Recon 1. There you go. Huge and dwarfs it. And next up, the two new kids on the block. Your uh, O-Knife Nightclaw, which goes right here, and as we can see, yeah, this is a very slender knife, particularly given that it's a finch, and, uh, of course, everybody's favorite toenail clipper, the Kershaw Platform, which actually does have a bit more usable blade, but overall, you are definitely in the same size class, so yeah, there is that. Now we're going to do our pocket test. Um, let's just uh, shut this. And it's got a light blade on it, but a good action. So obviously you have a milled tie pocket clip right there. And yeah, you can totally see the butt of the knife, but it absolutely is deep enough carry. So that is a nice thing. Good action on it, too. Um, one thing that I will note about this is that uh, you have basically a long pull. And if you're going to look at that, you're probably going to go, oh, yeah, well, that probably means I can uh, thumb flick it or something. No, you actually can't. You really, if you do want to two-hand open it, you absolutely can. But that's not going to help you flick it. As you can see here, you're not going to reverse flick it either because it's only on one side of the blade. Uh, struck me as a little odd, given the uh, 
rest of the knife, but there you go. It's, a, it's there for looks, it's cool, but not exactly functional. But this is a super duper legal knife. I mean, we also have, I like the, uh, I like, I like the uh, the way they did the liner lock. Um, I, I, the interesting thing is, usually Finch's liner locks do not tend to kind of narrow down. It, usually, if they have this, if they have bolsters, they kind of they're, they're bolster locks. This is the only exception. This is the only liner lock they do with a rear bolster on it. So, yeah, that's actually kind of interesting. It's definitely a unique design for them. You've also got a nice, uh, very, very useful blade shape. You can see the belly right there. Uh, obviously, that makes for a very nice blade when cutting cardboard or acrylic material in particular. I was actually just breaking down uh, some boxes with, of um, cardboard that I had gotten for model cars in today, 143rd scale. And uh, so let's uh, do a cut test or, you know, and yeah, we absolutely uh, can see that this is slicing really nicely. It's thin behind the edge, well heat treated, well done. Pretty much everything that we have come to expect from Finch. And there we are. I just want to get the one piece that fell. Okay. And let's uh, break this down. Oh yeah, this is definitely good. So, you may be wondering, okay, how much is it? Particularly given that usually the, the, uh, the knives with bolsters that Finch offers are about $145, but this one isn't. This one's actually a little bit less, particularly, I'm guessing probably owing to the liner lock, but it is $130, which is, I believe, the least expensive knife that they have that's currently in production where they're doing a lot of drops because it's a recent model. Um, it's very widely available. A lot of websites have it as well. And interestingly enough, by the way, we are coming up on a drop date for a new Finch knife, which is to say the, uh, the Finch Shiv that will be released on... July the 14th, uh, around midday. Actually, I'm very much looking forward to that, but I should absolutely wait for that. And that is Finch's latest liner lock. It's a more conventional liner lock than this, but yeah, the uh, I, I really like what they did with the whole rear bolster and uh, having the liner lock kind of, kind of come out from that. It, it's just a very strong, well-done arrangement. I really think also that, you know, the gunstock pattern itself is really, really lending itself to ergonomic goodness. So yeah, that's a thing. And definitely something that one has to keep in mind. Now, of course, we did uh, cut down some tape and we've got some tape on there, but uh, let's see if we can't uh, split a packing peanut cleanly. think we did. Oh, that was beautifully clean. Okay. So, and is this side as beautifully clean? Oh yeah. Nice. All right. So there you have the Finch Hatfield. And by the way, they are doing the Finch McCoy, which is a similar knife with a different blade. I believe said blade is a sheep's foot. Uh, can't really remember looking at it too recently though, but they have a picture of the prototype up if you're interested in it. I certainly am. I will be getting it whenever it comes out. So uh, if you are interested, again, these are $130 and I mentioned the materials involved, a 154cm blade steel, very well heat treated by QSP. And it is, uh, you can get them from just about any retailer. Um, and you can also buy them straight from uh, Finch for 130 bucks as well. So do I, do I recommend this? 
Yes, absolutely, if you're a Finch Knives fan especially, but I would also recommend this to anyone who might need something with a little bit of extra lock strength that they're going to be carrying in areas where you have legal lines. So this um, has been J.W. Greenbaum, having brought you Gaining an Edge, the show where we discuss, review, examine, look back upon, and generally enjoy knives. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you could leave a comment, please leave a comment. I promise I will get back to you. Uh, please hit the subscribe button. We absolutely have more than just Gaining an Edge here. Um, and for that reason, I would also say to hit the bell notification icon because, yeah, we do... Um, uh, we do two for Tuesday, three for Thursday, and fun night Friday. Also, please be aware that there is a giveaway at 500 subs, and um, I have two of the three knives that I am going to give away from that. I'm pretty sure I know what I'm gonna what the third one is. I'm just not totally sure. So there you go. And this has been J.W. Greenbaum signing off and wishing you a great day.